Hey everyone, this is Julia with episode number 65 of the Mixology Talk podcast. It is January, and that means it's time to start making plans for the new year. Now, if you're anything like me, you kind of plan your year around amazing cocktail weeks. And if you're anything like me, you just, hey, we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, that works because I plan them all. (laughs) (laughs) So we thought we would spend a little bit of time talking about some of the amazing bar and bartender and cocktail weeks that are coming out over the next year and tell you a big piece of news for us as well. Very exciting stuff. Stay tuned. So I am not a patient person, so I've got to tell you about our project first. Yeah, I think uh, I think you should. You just know that I'm really excited to talk about it, don't you? I I don't want to stand in your way. (laughs) (laughs) So our big news is that we are actually launching a conference of our own. And if you have had your eye on our website or our Facebook page, you probably saw us talking all about this yesterday, the day before this podcast is being released. But in short... It's a very a conference of our own with one major caveat. Well, two major caveats. Two major caveats. That's true. The yeah. first major caveat is it's online. Completely accessible to everyone. All you need is an internet connection. No pants required. Ooh. I know. Yay. I know. And that goes for even the people who don't wear pants to tails. Yeah. And the second and possibly the biggest caveat is completely free. Completely free for anybody who wants to join us. The only thing you have to be is over drinking age. That's one requirement. I think that's kind of fair. Yeah. I kind of doubt anybody listening to this is under drinking age. I hope not. Yeah. And pants are optional. Pants are optional. Absolutely. (laughs) So stay tuned uh, to the end of the podcast. We're going to give you a lot more details about how it works, how to sign up. um, All that good stuff. A lot more information on it. But we also want to talk about some of the other summits that are out there and a lot of the other um, cocktail conferences that are out there just in case there's something that's a little bit more regionally focused where you're at as well. There's so many great conferences and I think that um, usually there's something nearby. So it's definitely worth considering. So the one disclaimer I wanted to start with is We are definitely going to miss some. If we covered every cocktail conference and every cocktail week in the the world, then this would be way too long of an episode and you'd get really bored and annoyed with us. Yeah. So, well, you're probably already bored and annoyed with us. So hopefully we'll minimize that a little bit. Right. Cut down on the boredom. Um, So if we did not mention your favorite cocktail conference, go ahead and head over to mixologytalk.com slash 65 and let us know in the comments and we'll have everything documented there. Yeah. So one of the first ones um, that comes out every year is San Antonio Cocktail Week. Now, there's just one problem. What's that? It already happened. Yeah, it did. It's it's early in January, which I think is such a great time to go to San Antonio. So I think these guys definitely have the timing down. Unfortunately, we're not getting this podcast out soon enough for you to go this year. So write it down. It's, it's usually mid-January, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. They do an amazing job. They've got a great lineup of speakers. I was, I was basically drooling all over Instagram over this last weekend, watching all the pictures come out. And uh, it'll probably be the same time next year. So keep an eye out for that. So 2017, put that on the radar. Exactly. Um, Now, one that is kind of regionally based here in California, and it kind of happens all up and down the California coastline, right? I think so. um, Is one called Golden State of Cocktails. I know they had one in San Francisco. There's one in LA. There's one in San Diego, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's those three. And they're all on different dates. I want to say it was November for San Francisco and December for San Diego and January for LA. LA is the big one. I think it's where they originated. I want to say that this this, uh, conference is a couple of years old now, and they're starting to get a pretty amazing lineup. I am bummed to say that we will not make it. It's next weekend, and uh, it's just a long drive. Yeah, yeah. So we're not going to make it. I'm sure we'll, we'll get a chance to go. I'm sure we will. So that's January 24th through 26th. So if you're in the LA area, I think you should definitely just at least try to stop in. Yeah, and uh, one that I've never heard of uh, before, but it kind of popped up on the research, is um, one in Las Vegas in Valentine's Day uh, from the 11th to the 14th called, very appropriately, For the Love of Cocktails. (laughs) 
<laughs> I noticed this one was over Valentine's Day, and I was like, that's a terrible time to have a conference. And then I noticed the name. It's perfect. This one is for charity. My understanding is that this is uh, something that Tony Abu Ghanim has, has been involved with in some capacity, either with the charity or the conference or both. Um, like I said, we haven't been, but it looks it looks like it's going to be a great conference, and they've got some packages there. So if you're looking for an excuse to go to Vegas for the holiday, for, for Valentine's Day, and hopefully if you're lady slash uh, male friend likes cocktails too then this might be a good option right and if you have a couple extra you can know, always get married in the chapel down the road hey, the drive-in uh, it's a twofer yep so another one that in vegas that we will be going to will be uh, the nightclub and bar convention. Now, this is going to be our first year, and I'm actually really excited. I took a good look at the agenda just about a week ago, and they've got some amazing speakers, and actually a huge number of amazing speakers. They've got this is a, a gigantic event, and I think the thing about this one is it really is more industry focused than um, more of the cocktail week style events. San Antonio Cocktail Week, Tales of the Cocktail, um, while they are certainly industry facing, you do have a lot of events that are very much more more consumer oriented mm -hmm. or basically anybody who likes a cocktail are going to love those events i'm not so sure about the nightclub and bar convention now i haven't been yet so ask me again in march i'm sure we'll have a podcast with all the updates on that probably one. well if we survive yeah <laughs> but the the key there is it's really focused on industry so we're really looking forward to meeting a bunch of industry folks and internet friends and um, really seeing what's out there in terms of what's happening in the industry yeah so if you're going to be going to that definitely reach out to us and uh, maybe we could all meet up and uh, share a cocktail somewhere. Definitely. So, Tales of the Cocktail, I'm sure everyone has heard of, because we, we mention them quite a bit. It's by far, so. in the U.S. anyways, the largest um, cocktail conference. They've started to go internationally. From my understanding, they did uh, one year in Vancouver, up in Canada. Oh, yeah? Uh, I believe so, like one of the earliest ones. And then now they're doing uh, Mexico City. Which sounds amazing. Oh, my God. Sign me up for that one. Seriously. So that one is going to be Tales on Tour Mexico City. It's in early April, April 10th to 12th. Um, and I have not had a chance to take a look at the agenda, but I think um, it just sounds like an incredible place to be, to be celebrating cocktails. So if you're in that area or if you just want an excuse to get down to Mexico City, that one might be a good option. And honestly, if you go, tell us about it. We want to hear all I, about that conference. Yeah, exactly. Because like I said in the beginning, we, you know, th th we're going to be going through, I don't know, 10 or so cocktail conferences. And there's no way that we can attend all of these. So oh. every single year, we need to make hard decisions about what we're going to and what we're not going to. So if you have been to any of these conferences that we haven't been to, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments over at mixologytalk.com slash 65. Was it worth it? Was it awesome? And why should we go next year? And uh, there's another one that I know Julia would be very excited to go and attend. Um, yes. It's out in Miami. It's uh, April 15th through the 17th, which is tax day, right? Oh, it is tax day. Yeah. <laughs> well, what better way to celebrate being finished with your taxes than with rum? Rum Renaissance in Miami. Oh, my gosh. It sounds incredible. How have we not been to that one? I, I don't know, but I have a feeling we'll probably end up going. Um, and I don't know too much about this conference. I know it kind of pops up on my uh, Facebook feed from... You know, around, around that time, the time. Of year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like everyone's in Miami. Oh man! Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't think you own white linen pants, though. So we're gonna have to stock. If that's up. what I need to do. Then that's what I need You're to do. You're gonna take one for the team. Yep. I appreciate that. So we're definitely going to consider that one in the future, but we haven't made it out there yet. So again, if you're in Miami, go do some recon for us. We would definitely appreciate it. And the one that's happened in July is, as we already mentioned, the biggest one in the country. Um, this is one where 30,000 bartenders and spirits professionals... Something like that. ...take over New Orleans for about a week. It's, better portion of almost two weeks, really. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty amazing, though. I mean, we've talked a lot about Tales of the Cocktail on this podcast before. The thing that always amazes me is, despite the fact that it's a week of free-flowing alcohol, basically, you don't really see a lot of people getting too unruly. Which I think I, is just a testament to the fact that it is a lot of industry people who either A, know how to hold their booze, and or B, they, they respect the profession. Yeah, it's, it's something that really surprised me and I was very, very glad about the first time we went is it's, 
a lot of education, a lot of networking, a lot of, you know, just saying hi to people you haven't seen, you know, in a year or whatever. Everybody's there. That's the one the one conference that it seems like the most people show right. up for. So it's like 30,000 of your best friends all in one city. It's really a lot of fun. And, you know, we're it's one big happy family family yeah so uh, we, it's it kind of embodies that really it's very true the thing that cracks me up about this one is that i have been to new orleans outside of tales of the cocktail and i can tell you right now bourbon street uh it's actually kind of cleaner and tidier with uh with bartenders around i think i think that you guys can't help it and you clean up after yourselves <laughs> oh uh, yeah it's funny yeah oh yeah um he says laughing you know that's true <laughs> He can't help himself. No, sometimes we'll walk through a restaurant or like a store or something like that, and there's a piece of paper on the floor, and you just you just can't help yourself but to pick it up. Um, I've seen you do that. <laughs> I think we had an episode about that too. Yeah, and I think that uh, with this one, I think they just know how many people are going to be there, so I think they just clean the streets a lot. I more. think that might be true. Yeah. Um, so, so Tales of the Cocktail this year is July 19th through 24th. I'm not sure yet if we're going. Just like I promised earlier in the episode, I don't know yet. And that is because of budget. Right. So what do we try to make every year because we're in the Bay Area is the San Francisco Craft Spirits Carnival. And this isn't a conference in a traditional sense. It's more of a showcase of really cool micro distillers. A a tasting, really. Yeah. Glorified tasting. Yeah. So there's not really an education component to it, but it is a lot of fun to get exposed to a lot of brands that you probably would never have heard of before. And they're they're all pretty much local. So so again, I, I mentioned this one definitely for folks who are in the San Francisco area. But if you're outside the San Francisco area, I would Google Craft Spirits Carnival, you know, Spirits Festival, something like that, um, and see if there's something near you, because there probably is. Yeah, and this one happens, um, the one in San Francisco anyways, happens in August. Which is a good time to go to San Francisco. Yeah, if you're going to be in the city anyways, you know, this is... August, that's that's the very beginning of the San Francisco summer. (laughs) Right, it's like September, October. You're starting to see the sunshine again. Right. But no promises. I, I can't promise anybody sunshine in San Francisco. It's a bet I'm not willing to take. So one conference that has always caught my eye and it looks like a ton of fun is the one that happens in Kentucky every year. And that's Camp Ronamuck. Now, this is one that I absolutely see take over my Instagram feed. Um, no, it's what was you. It was August, was it? I believe it's like I think it's August, but I'm not sure about the August, dates September, for this like year. Um, now, it, again, it's not really a conference, but what it does have is, is a definite education component. Um seems to me like a couple hundred bartenders descend on Kentucky and and do amazing tastings, um, listen to seminars, do educational events, and then uh, run amok. Yeah, I saw, I, I think last year I saw um, paintball in there and all kinds of other like It looks like those 80s activities. movies about summer camp where people are jumping in a lake and paddling around in canoes and, and everybody's looking really, really happy. That's what it looks like. Right. Uh, which makes me really want to go. Unfortunately, the timing has never quite worked out for us. So I don't think you're going to see us there this year, but um, you might just see a few of your other closest friends. Yeah. Um, and I th- believe the last one um, is the largest one in the world um, that I haven't verified those facts. You're just making this um, up. But that's, I think I read an article somewhere on the internet, so it's got to be true. Well, I um, know this is a big one for sure, and it's called Bar Convent Berlin. This one takes place in Germany, in case you weren't sure, and it's on October 11th and 12th in 2016. Hmm. I know. I think we might have to uh, consider it. Mm, maybe uh, Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest and then go to Bar Convent. That cannot oh my God. be a coincidence. <laughs> I looked at the roster last year in uh, 2015, and there were some amazing speakers there. I want to say that Jeffrey Morgenthaler was there, a few other big names in the industry. And I, it was just a, a really great experience. Unfortunately, we were not able to make it last year, and I kind of doubt it for this year, too. But uh, for the folks outside the U.S., especially if you're in Europe, that might be a good one to check out. So yeah, like we said, there are a lot of different, you know, bartending conferences and craft cocktail conferences all over the world. Um, and if you have the those resources available near you, then you should definitely check them out and tell us about them. We haven't gone to a lot of these. We've only gone to a handful. So we'd love to get your insight and, um, you know, your your thoughts on which one uh, you really enjoy. Absolutely. There are a couple other ones that I wanted to note that are, don't really fit the mold of, of the things that we've been discussing so far. The first thing I wanted to mention is the Bar Institute. Now, my understanding is that the Bar Institute used to be part of Portland Cocktail Week. 
but now they have grown, and I am seeing lots of Bar Institute events all over the USA. They're all, all sorts of dates, all sorts of places, so I would definitely look this up. I know they do an amazing job in Portland, and they are in Portland again, but they're also in several other places, so look into it. You might be able to join one of those a little bit closer to home. Yeah, that that sounds like a lot of fun, and uh, we'll definitely make that a priority soon um, to go to one of those now, just like we mentioned earlier with the Craft Spirits Carnival, there are cocktail weeks everywhere. When we were doing our research, we probably skipped over 30 or 40 local cocktail weeks just because we didn't want this to be a really boring episode. Well, we'll, we'll have to try no harder promises. next time. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. But there are lots of local cocktail weeks, and usually the way I find them is by Googling the word cocktail week and take a look and, and usually google is smart enough to tell you what's close closer to you um but if not you should be able to poke around and see if there's something in the next biggest city next to you um and then just go up from there that's how i would probably research yeah and um and one that i've heard a lot of um that i'm not sure is still in existence anymore is manhattan cocktail classic my understanding is that last year they they uh called it quets that this one is no longer happening and i hope i'm wrong and if anybody knows um for sure that i'm wrong definitely let us know in the comments but i think this one just got too complicated from a uh logistics and from a liquor control board perspective interesting okay yeah i could see that now those are all rumors so they could be absolutely false you know how those but, rumors are but I, I will say that the thing that i wanted to mention is that these these cocktail weeks and and conferences have an amazing amazing challenge on their hands not only do they have to corral a bunch of bartenders which i definitely don't want to be in charge of that but they also have to to maneuver through the paperwork and logistics associated with serving alcohol in big cities from lots of different brands without a traditional liquor license so i, I just want to say for anybody out there who's planning these events i have a lot of respect for you and i think that what we can do to support them is to go have a great time respect the event and share the good news yeah. talk about how great they were absolutely so to kind of bring it full circle and start uh and end where we started um why don't you tell us a little about the details and uh, some of the nitty-gritty about the uh the craft bartender summit so basically what we're doing is we're getting six amazing industry experts and putting together seminars with each one those seminars are going to play on the web on april 17th and if you are interested in watching them live, you get the benefit of actually chatting in the chat box with the speakers. So the cool thing is you can watch the video, which is pre-recorded, but you can also chat with the speaker throughout the whole thing. So you don't have to like interrupt them. You don't have to feel bad about raising your hand in class or anything. Um, it's all going to be completely live if you watch it with us on April 17th. So it's just a great way to kind of be in the same room, essentially, as some of these experts and really kind of just ask them the questions that we we're all dying to ask. And I've seen the list, I've seen the lineup, and I, I could not be more excited about this. I really am too. I think we've got some we've got some amazing people on the list. And I, I definitely am excited about announcing it, but I can't do it yet. So oh, no. But the good news is registration is open. And if you would like to join us, and I hope you will, um, it's really easy. You just have to head over to craftbartendersummit.com and we'll definitely include that link in the show notes, of course. Um, and go ahead and sign up there. All you got to do is give us your email address and confirm that you are drinking age and we'll be in business. So yeah, the biggest reason for us to start this was just how difficult it is to get to a lot of these conferences. You know, we, we listed 10 to 15 different conferences. And if you're not in that area, it's a really hard time to get out there, dedicate the time, take time off work. And it's just, it's a lot of logistics to try and manage. Absolutely. Not I, to mention the expense. I remember in, uh, I think it was 2013, the first time that we went to Tales together and you you had to take a full week unpaid off of work. The things I had to do to get that time off work. Oh my gosh. I it was it was like three days before we left and Chris was still locking it down, getting his shifts covered. It was like pulling teeth and I'm I, sure this sounds very familiar to everybody. Well and not only that, but you're you're fighting to go without pay. That's the thing. Right. It's not, you know, for folks out there with quote unquote traditional jobs, you use your paid vacation. But bartenders aren't so lucky. And that's really the thing that we were hearing over and over again when we had the opportunity to go to Tales and these other conferences, we would get emails and comments from people who are saying, I would kill to go to that, but there's just no way I can afford it or I can't get the time off or some combination of the two. And so, I don't, you know, for us, I just doesn't, doesn't sound fair. 
you know? So yeah, exactly. Wh- I mean, I think that, that every bartender really deserves a, a great bar education. That's the whole reason that we started A Bar Above. It's the whole reason that we started this podcast. And so really, this is just one more way that we are trying to bring an amazing craft bar education to bartenders all over the world. Yeah. So... Um, I'm pretty excited about this. I am too. Yeah. I'm so excited. Um, by the time this podcast comes out, it'll be it'll be uh, released for one day, so I'll lo- know how things went. But if you if you're into this sort of thing, if you're excited about coming, do me a favor. Go ahead and sign up and and share it for us. The challenge for us with this event is that we are getting some great sponsors from across the industry. We and what I need is I need to get those sign ups so that we can lock in those sponsors. That's how that's how we really make this happen. So if you're excited about this and if you want to join us, um that would be amazing. And if you think your friends might be interested too, help us share the word. It would really mean a lot to us. Absolutely. So we got that to look forward to and um like I like we mentioned, we could not be more excited and uh I got one more thing. Oh, no. I can't I handle it. One more thing. And that is on April 17th. That's when we're doing the live playback. But if you miss it, we're going to send out free replays to everybody. So don't worry about your schedule on the 17th. We would love for you to join us live. But um, we're going to give everybody the opportunity to watch everything, even if you miss it on that day. So if you work Sundays... We got you covered. Totally. Oh, I'm so excited. I know. <laughs> so head on over to mixologytalk.com slash 65 to let us know about all the conferences that you've attended and what you thought of them. And then head over to craftbartendersummit.com and sign up. And there will be a link in the show notes to that as well. Absolutely. So cheers, everyone. And we'll talk to you soon. See you in April. Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.